My favorite, favorite, favorite part of SAM, besides the grades for me, is that it provides um, students with a wonderful report um, to tell them, you know, what's wrong. And again, when a student says immediately, you know, I see I got a 97%, how come? Well, their reports are delivered to them in MindTap. So as soon as they submit an exam or submit a project, unless you turn off reports or unless you say reports aren't available till another date, they're going to get it right away to look at. And so rather than asking me why did I get this score, I train them early on to go look at their reports. And I, I in fact, make them submit a report to me for grade. They have to submit a study guide report and they have to submit a graded project report once in the beginning of the semester for grade so that I know that they know what those reports are. So as an instructor, you'll come over to the, um, the SAM app to open it up. And this takes you to the back end sort of of SAM where you can alter your assignments a bit and you can um, also grab the reports. And again, I'm, I'm doing that spinning thing that I was doing earlier. So let me just try it one more time. There we go. So the first thing is it comes up with everything that is set up in your course and um, actually everything that's available in your course. So you might have things hidden over here in the, uh, the unit view, but this is all the stuff that's available in your class should you turn it on um, another time. So the first thing, this little button right here allows you to preview the tasks in the exam or if you're on a project. And you can launch these tasks if you just want to test it out yourself. So that's what that little eye does over here on the left-hand side. Over on the right-hand side, um, you have an edit button, and that's what allows you to change um, how many tries the students have, whether you want it graded or not. Um, maybe you don't want this to be, you know, a graded option for um, maybe training. You don't want it graded. You just want it to be practice and not graded. Do you want the results displayed at the end of the exam? I do. I want my students to, you know, see a score, but you're in MindTap, so it goes right to the grade book and you get the report. So it, it's going to automatically be populated in there. You can specify time limits if you want, if you want them to get another, um, another retry, if you want reports to be due um, later, to be visible later than right after they take it, and if you want passwords in here, you can, you can alter all of that from right in here. So that's what the, um, the edit button did. This is, if you had any incompletes, like if you notice that students' scores weren't coming through because they didn't submit, this just pushes the, um, the results through for you. So that's what that is. But I'm going to go to results and show you some of the reports. So first of all, with the exams, we've got frequency analysis. It's exactly like it has been for, for years and years of you providing exams to your students. It tells you what tasks are missed most often. So you can either train uh, your students better on those or you can remove them from your exam if, if it's something that you don't think, um, you know, anyone can ever get right. Individual performance, if you want to see how well a student did on, on one exam, but the great thing about this, hopefully I'm bringing up one that I missed. <clears throat> if a student complains about a task that they know they did right, but Sam marked them wrong, you can open up their individual project, I'm sorry, their individual performance report, and you can do a playback of that task. Oh, my pop-ups are blocked. Try this again. You're going to see the students clicking away in here. Now, I can't remember what this task was. It was applying heading to style. So this student is applying normal. That's not right. Heading two, no. So again, I this is just my my dummy account. So obviously, I was not even following directions here. But um, I did notice one day a student kept saying that they entered the header, and I could clearly see they were clicking on the footer every time. So this click path is is a great feature, and I. I only get a handful of students every semester that maybe argue with an exam task and I go look at the playback. So it's not like I'm in here every day having to do a playback. Because this is only available to you, not to the student. Um, that's the individual performance report. We also have section results by exam or section. If you want to do any filtering or sorting um, on, your, on your assessments, you can do so here with these exams, with these um, reports. 
You can scroll down and look at one student's results right here, but all of this um, you can get from within your grade book inside MindTap as well. So I don't use a whole lot of these, except what I will do is after a project, I might, um, I might generate a report to see if I've got any project incidents, and I'll show you that one in a second. But you know, maybe looking at, um, maybe looking at one of these by, by exam to see how many students have done it already, compare this to maybe what scores are, are populating inside MindTap. I mean, you can do a sort of that here. Um, some people like okay. to do this because you can sort. Yes? Question? Oh, I thought I heard something. But you can sort by, um, by score here, by points, number correct, time spent. So you've got a lot more options within, within these reports if you want to go into the nitty-gritty of them. Um, I can't think of any others in here that I use specifically, so I'm going to move on to projects. Oh, one thing, like, let me point this out. On the individual performance, for instance, um, because I don't have an example of a study guide brought up for you, this is my best way of showing you what a study guide would look like. The students can print out a study guide or view a study guide where it talks about the subject, the activity, the task ID, and this is important. If they're telling you something's not working, they can send that task ID to tech support or to you, and you, know, you can research it more if you've got that information. Um, the students will also be told if they got a task right or wrong, and then they have a column for remediation back to the ebook, a link that goes back to the ebook, and they've got a link for training if they want to train on any of those missed tasks. So this is kind of similar to what a study guide would, report would look like for a student, but they've got those extra links. So moving on to project reports. <clears throat> so these are the two I use most often. Um, again, you've got frequency analysis, individual performance, but it doesn't have a click path because they're doing something live in the application. It just shows what their results are on, on something. Um, but down at the very, very bottom is a download submitted project report. Let me show you that one first. You've got a copy of the student's submitted file and a copy of their graded file. Now the graded file will be brought up in the application in which it was created. Um, so if it's PowerPoint, you'll see a PowerPoint report. If it's Excel, you'll see an Excel report, and so on and so forth. So first of all, it tells you what the student's score is. Oops, I didn't mean to pull up one with 100, but if I had any wrong, it would have given me a red X, and it would have, um, I could have gotten some um, like partial credit. Maybe I just didn't bold the contents. So maybe I got a zero for that, but I got all the rest of the points, you know, in here. It would give me a red X by anything I got wrong, and of course the green check mark if I got it right. And within the document or the spreadsheet or the, you know, access table, um, you will see markups. I'm trying to get to my worksheet here. You would actually see markups or comment boxes for anything that you got wrong. And um, it's funny how the students will say, It'll say that they typed blooming everywhere in, incorrectly, and they'll look at it 10 times and say, it's right there, I typed it. And it might be just that the I or the E was missing, and they just aren't being attentive to the details of, of what they're putting in there. If they type in a, um, a tab name incorrectly, Sam won't be able to find it. So they've got to be very, very um, clear with that. And Sam will tell them if something is missing or incorrect, and they just need to go back and fix it and resubmit it. So it takes a lot of, on my part in the beginning to teach my students how to do that, how to read their reports. And then, of course, I love the project incident report. So what this will tell me is if a student did something and cheated off another student. And sadly, I had a student last week, so at the end of our semester, that went to the tutoring center, and I found out that the tutors in the tutoring center were providing some of their old files to my students. And so a lot of people got in trouble last week. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and bring one of these up and see what I've got. Okay, so this is telling me that Jane Smith borrowed John Smith's um, file for this assignment, the Excel Module 1, Stamp Project 1. And then here it says John cheated off himself. So the things that you might get are that students didn't use a starting file, they borrowed someone else's file, or Maybe they're working on their second or third submission and they're copying and pasting from their own file, or maybe they took it last semester and they're using something from another semester. 
But um, this is what an incident report would look like. And you can, uh, at the end of every week when I've got assignments due, I go in and look at my incident reports, and I really don't like it when I find cheaters. It's, it just, I don't know, it's so time-consuming to have to deal with that, but it sure nips things in the bud quickly. 